Hey everybody, it's Rev from Into Gaming. Today we're going to dive into part two of the multiplayer interaction system uh, where we introduce doors. Um, so we're going to pick up exactly where we left off in part one uh, where we were discussing how to set up our uh, interactive trace to actually just hit the collision that we applied versus actually hitting the static mesh because if we remember we were testing pulling off of uh, hit actor and seeing if it implements our interaction uh, blueprint interface so what needs to happen is we need to just define it out so we can hit that trace and just hitting the actor won't count so the way that we're going to do that is by adding a custom profile to our collision system um, and then assigning it to this collision and then validating that it's using that profile so the first thing we need to do is go into project settings and go to collision and under presets we need to add a new preset and to do that just hit new and I'm going to edit mine so you can see exactly what we have uh, named it interactive query only no physics collision world dynamic and for the description we just name it interactive collision and we're only going to block the visibility channel. That's it. Um, when you set these up, you have to restart your uh, project for it to enable. So go ahead and do that. I've already done that, so I can uh, jump right in here and start tackling out this stuff. So first thing I need to do is on my interact collision for the interact test, we're going to go in and where's the collision? and we're going to set that to interactive and it's everything else is the same um, character can't step on no no overlap events we're just setting it to interactive it's going to be at the bottom of your list once that is done we're going to jump back over to our first person character and go into the BPI trace function now off of hit component we want to get collision profile name and this is going to bring the name of the that collision over so it's going to actually bring us this interactive and then we have to t test against it so equals and this is case sensitive and then what we'll do here is do an and bool and then pipe this in and clean this up a little bit we're going to run this up here. So, this is our new setup. And it should work exactly how we want it to. So, boom. Um, what this is going to do now is going to check the actor, see if it Im implements the uh, BPI interact interface. And then it's going to check that we hit a specific collision with the profile of interactive. Let's give that a real quick test. I'm going to go over here. Okay, I'm hitting the actor now and it's not validating. And when I hit our little collision here, it is validating. So we're, we're solid there. So we got that out of the way. Um, one other thing in the uh, player class, if you're using the first person template setup, just default right out of the box like in, in this one uh, we need to go over to our, our mesh and, and make a little adjustment to its configuration so with this particular template you have two meshes this is the third person body it's like the full body mesh that you would apply and there's nothing applied on it by default um, and this one is the one that we see with the arms so um, to make this so we can see these arms when we go into a, 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 a multiplayer setup with two players or more we need to go in and turn off something only owner C we need to uncheck that by default it's checked we need to uncheck that otherwise we won't see the other players arms in in our little demonstration here so um, just to get that out of the way uh, we are good to go on that so um, let's start making a door 
So we go back to our blueprints folder and we're going to create a new folder called net actors and just network actors uh, right um, out of this what we're going to we're going to need a uh, enumerator so set up our enumeration e uh, let's say door state all right I'm going to open this up and we're going to add two we need closed and open. This is going to control our um, our states for our door. This is what we're going to replicate across the network. We're not going to actually replicate movement um, from the server. It just it just looks janky when you start doing it with server because everybody's running at a different uh, frame rate. Uh, they have different pings. Uh, and all of this stuff, there's packet law, so all of these things jumbled together can just make interactions like this horrible. Um, so we're going to create that. We got that out of the way. So now we're going to need a new blueprint class of actor type. BP net door. And we're going to dive right into this guy. Uh, we don't need our interact test anymore, so and I'll save that. Um, let's get some variables slapped in here real quick. We need a closed rotation, and that's going to be a rotator. And we're going to need an open rotation, rotator. And we're going to need our door state, which is going to be that enumerator, e door state. There we go. Compile that. And we're going to make sure that our door state by default is closed. And then we're going to set this to replicated. Oh, I'm sorry. Rep notify. Uh, makes things a lot easier there. Um, from there we're going to start building out our components. So with my setup I like to have a door frame for my doors as the root. You don't have to do it this way. Um, this is going to be my uh, my root is going to be the door frame. You could just have a scene component there if you if you want, but you need to have something other than your actual door as a root. Uh, just be cognizant of that because we're going to be uh, rotating r on, on relatives, so we're going to set the relative rotation of our door. Um, and the only way it can have a relative rotation is if the parent if there's a parent actor to it or a component to it. So um, from there, we're going to add another static mesh. And this is going to be the door. And while the door is selected, we're going to add a box collision, which is going to be our interactive collision. All right, so with our interact collision, we know exactly what we need to do. Uncheck this, set that to no, and then interactive. And the only other thing that I want to do with rendering is I want to uncheck hidden in game. And where's it other? And then shape under for under shape, shape color. I'm just going to change it to a different color so we know what's going on in there. So with my door frame, uh, SM net door frame. A nice little door frame from the. Uh, what is it? The uh, modular industrial area. That's a pack on the marketplace. Uh, it used to be free. Uh, it came out one time in the uh, monthly free. Uh, I don't think it's free anymore, but it's it's a decent little set. Uh, so I'm going to be using that uh, for this setup. And let's get into our door. For our door, I'm going to do net door. And that's my set up there. Now with the door frames collision um, pretty solid with what that's supposed to be. Uh, let's see 
no overlap events yes the character can get up on it if its collisions are there uh, we're going to do collision uh, custom query only no physics world dynamic Boom. Uh, we're going to apply the same setup to our actual door physics, world dynamic, good to go. So it's pretty much straight with that. So let's go ahead and, and set up our alignment for our door. Get this pretty close. This takes the longest to do this. One of the key things you want to note with this door setup is because we're rotating it, um, it's origin point needs to be uh, pretty specific to the mesh and I'll highlight that as soon as I get this down. There's a little too much gap there. And that should be good. Center line. Notice that the, uh, the door is centered here on the y-axis. Alright. Alright, so when, when you do your mesh for this uh, you want the origin point to be on the hinge side of the door. It can be in the middle, it can be at the top or the bottom. I prefer mine in the bottom. It's one of the reasons why I went with this uh, static mesh for this. It was already preset there. Um, because we're going to be rotating it off that side. So when your your door opens, then click this. It's like this rotating off that origin point and I like doing it off the hinge side obviously <laughs> so it's nice and clean alright so um, our default rotation for the door in its closed state is uh, on Z it's zero so basically that's your closed rotator it's done um, the open rotation uh, we want to get and we want to I like prefer for this type of door to open inward so this is a, a two-state door it's either closed or it's open and for a two-state door normal common doors I like opening it inward instead of outward towards the character it will always open inward um, like this so we're just gonna say 90 on that so set the let's reset this and then we're gonna go to open rotation and we're gonna set that to 90 when we get into the uh, dual directional, bi-directional doors, which swing both ways, um, we will have another variable here, and uh, we will have interaction where we can go both directions. So that is coming. Uh, just a slightly different setup, not much more to it. Um, but we're going to start with this one. All right, now we got to get our collision in place. It's like that collision, and with its shape, I believe it's ten. 15 and 15 is a good size. So I'm gonna bring that over. Bring it up roughly on the door itself. I'm gonna go back in the top. And we're gonna adjust it out. I like mine to go all the way to the edge of the door. As you can see right down here where the edge of the door is. I like to go all the way to the edge of the door. And I want that origin of that on center so you have equal parts front and back so we're going to just use one collision for this because there's only two states um, when we get into the bi-directional we'll have two collisions one for the outside one for the inside so we can determine which side of the door was interacted with um, so we should be pretty good with this I think everything is solid here so now we can get actually into actually coding this thing um, Let's go to uh, class settings and we're going to add our blueprint interface. So that's implemented. Compile that. Now we're going to go to class defaults and we're going to just check replicates. We're going to need leave net load on client in place because this will be placed into a map. We want the clients to load that door regardless of its current state. So we have that at uh, net load on client is ticked and we should be solid here so let's jump over to the event graph get rid of these two I don't need event bin begin play right now we might need it we're gonna need it in the future so I'll just go ahead and leave that 
Um, let's start off with a couple custom vents. We're going to have an uh, open door. We're going to have another custom. Closed. Closed door. And then we're going to go to our interface and we're going to right click on that and implement event. Now we'll bring this guy back up here to the top. And then we're going to create a timeline. And we're going to name this TL underscore LERP rotation. So we get that prefix of TL on there so we know that this uh, component over here is a timeline um, just by a, at a glance. And now we're going to set up our play, our open, to play from start and our close reverse from in. We're going to drag in our door. We're going to drag it off pretty good over here. And we're going to set relative rotation. Set relative rotation. We're going to pipe that into update. Get that cleaned up right there a little bit. Um, and then we're going to bring in our closed rotation. Bring them over here and our open rotation right here and then we're going to off the close we're going to lerp and it's going to give us a lerp rotator so we're going to go ahead and hook that up i'll expand this off because we're not going to check these i just want them shown so you know exactly what i'm doing there and right there um so we're pretty much straight with this we just need to set up our timeline and we're going to do a reroute here so on finish, there's some things you, you you might want to do when the door finishes opening or closing. Like playing sounds and so forth, I always pipe these off right out of the gate so that uh, I know that I haven't forgotten something with my setups. So those are pretty good. So um, let's jump into the timeline. Uh, new track. It's going to be a float track. We're going to name it Alpha. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set the length to 1. Make sure you hit Enter after you set that value. Uh, we're going to add a key float and then add another key float. This key float will be zero enter and zero. And this key float will be one. Make sure you hit enter and then one again. And make sure you hit enter. Let me hit these two guys here, bring everything up. While this one is still selected, hold control, click the other, right click on it, and then add an uh, auto curve to it. So this is done. Nothing else has to be set in there. We're going to just have a one second setup. In a future build, we're going to, I'm going to write out a function for you so you can set up a config variable to set how fast you want that door to go. Um, and we're going to keep these values the same, 0 and 1. So we're good there. We can go ahead and close that. Um, from the event interact, we want switch has authority. We only want the server to implement this. Um, off of authority, we're going to pop branch. That going, and now we're going to bring our uh, timeline reference up here and check is playing. So what we're doing here is uh, setting up a little, little bit of flow control to keep the player or any player from spamming an interaction say I go over and I hit the door and I'm opening it and somebody's on the other side of it and then they hit that that door with an interaction we don't want that second interaction to over uh, overwrite the current implementation or transition of the door so we don't want the door going toggling back and forth back and forth back and forth really quickly so we're going to use this to control that um, it's one of the methods we're going to use clean that up real quick. So off this we need to get our door state. I'm gonna bring him up a little bit because he's most important. So we're gonna drag in our door state. Get and then we're gonna do a switch. Switch on door state. And we're pulling off the false pin. So we only want to do anything if it's not if the timeline isn't running. So the transitions have already been completed. So we're getting what right now we're taking the current state okay if the current state is closed um, 
we want the new state on interaction to be opened. Um, if it's opened, we want it to be closed. So we're letting the actor itself on the server define what the new state's going to be. And that's important. So there's no misinterpretation of what's going on on client to client to client to client. It's always what the server says is going on. So with that real quick, you can see event interact switch has authority on authority server only. We're going to check if the timeline is, is basically in transition. So let me make a note there. In transition. Yeah, I spelled it right. In transition. No, we're not. What's the current state of the door? It's closed, so we're going to set it to open. If it's open, we're going to set it to close. And that right there is the bulk of this um, for controlling what the state of the door is and, and so forth. So um, beyond that, we need to go to the open uh, on rep door state. And with this, pretty much the same as the front end. So we grab our door state, we run a switch. And we're basically looking at what's the new state. What are we transitioning to? So, if the uh, if the new state is closed, we want to close the door. If it is open, we want to open the door. And as usual, let's pipe off some returns. there duplicate that and then we'll run this real quick and we should be good to go so that's pretty much it now let's drop one of these bad boys in we don't need this one in the level anymore so I'm gonna bring this one in and I'm gonna rotate it real quick So let's go ahead and, and, and test our door. Make sure everything's working on it. I don't think I forgot anything. Wait, 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 wait. Did I forget something on it? Let's go. That is correct. We're good there. We're good there. Oh, yes. I forgot to hook up the alpha. Gotta hook up the alpha. Straighten that. Get our alpha all plugged up. Now we're good. My bad. My bad. When you're plowing through these things, you can forget stuff. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Door opens and it closes. Now if I just hit the door itself, nothing's happening. I hit the our little interactive collision. We are solid. There we go. Now, next thing we got to do is see what it looks like in multiplayer. So, net mode, client, two player, new windows. And let me stretch this guy out a little bit. Boom. Alright. Ooh, see some floating arms. See if we didn't set those arms up in that mesh. Alright, both players are seeing the same thing at the same time. I'll pull back over here. I'm going to tr control tab so we can jump screens. And let me control tab again. I need to be looking at the door on the other one. Come back to this guy. And interacts. Hard to get center of screen when you don't have a crosshair set up. Alright, that looks good. So. Um, one thing I want to do real quick here is come over to this duration and just set it to like two. Because five seconds is a little too long. One more run through this real quick. I'm going to make sure everything is tight on that. And boom. 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 
So there we go. We have our network door. Um, it's in play. Uh, the only thing that we're replicating is a single value. The server is defining the state and down to the point that the actor itself on the server is defining the new state based off of its current state. Um, and we have a small setup here that prevents um, another player hitting interact on the same door and overriding the current state. We have to let it get to an endpoint transition before we modify that state. So it has to fully get to a closed position before anybody can change the state of it or opened. Um, in the next video we're going to go ahead and slam out right out of the gate. We're going to do the bi-directional door um, so you can open it and close it from both sides and we're going to add a little bit more functionality to our trace system. Um, another function in the blueprint interface uh, to help reduce that spam right out of the gate. Um, so uh, with that, uh, any questions, just as always, hit the comments.